Hey guys, today I'll show you how to set up bitcoins, ordinals and runes on your Mac from start to finish so you can be ready when runes go live in a couple days. Before we start, if you don't know who I am, my name is Greg. I'm the founder of OneMint and NFT art generator. We build tools for NFT creators and blockchain tools. So this video is going to be four parts. The first part is going to be how to format your SSD hard drive to install Bitcoins and ordinals. The second part is going to be how to install Bitcoin itself and have it running on your computer. The third step is going to be how to install ordinals so you can actually uh, etch and mint runes. And the last step is going to be about troubleshooting. I had a few issues in the setup myself. So I'll share how I was able to fix them. So the first step we need to do is to have an SSD hard drive and you need at least two terabytes of data. So if we look at my hard drive, it's right here. I have two external hard drive, one that's one terabyte and the second one that's two terabytes. And this is the one where I installed Bitcoin and ordinals and it currently takes 1.2 terabytes. So the recommendation generally is to uh, buy a two terabyte external hard drive. And I'll show you exactly the one I have. Actually, those two are the same. It's uh, this hard drive. I own the one terabyte version. I've owned it for multiple years now. And I just bought the two terabytes just so I could install bitcoins and ordinals. So you can buy this one or other ones. I'm just saying that's the one I have. Just make your own decision. So once you have your hard drive connected, we need to format it to the right format. So in order to do that on Mac is I'm going to open the control command and type disk utility and I'm going to open this the disk utility app and I should see something like this and you should have your external hard drive appear. So mine is called SSD2 because I already had one and I named it this way. What you want to do is right click and choose erase. You can rename yours if you want. But very important, the format needs to be APFS. I'm not going to click erase, otherwise I would need to restart everything from scratch and it takes actually days. So I'm not going to do that. So when you click erase, it takes less than a minute. I think it takes just a few seconds to do. The second step is to download, install and then index Bitcoin. So in order to do that, we need to download it. And to download it, you can head to bitcoincore.org slash en slash download. And you have a bunch of options here. So it's really important that you pick the right one. So if you have an M1, M2 or M3 Mac, you need to choose the Mac OS X 8664. If you do not, you choose the other option. So if you click this, it's going to download a DMG file, which I already downloaded. And it will look like this in your download folder. And you just double click it to start it. So it opened right there. It looks like this. And you would drag and drop the Bitcoin core into application. I'm not going to do that because I already did it again. Okay. So once you've done that, you can go to your application and scroll down to Bitcoin Core. Mine is right here. I'll double click it in just a second. But once you do, you're going to start a fresh install. And the screen you'll see is this one. So it's very important on this step that you choose the custom data directory and you select the pass to your external hard drive. That's what I did. And one extra recommendation or mistake I did that I would do differently 
is the root of my hard drive is where I installed Bitcoin. If I had to do it again, I would actually create a new directory called Bitcoin and install it under Bitcoin is what I would do. Okay, so as you may, you pick the right pass and click OK. Then you will see the screen to index Bitcoin. And I'll show you exactly what it looks like once I open my version of Bitcoin. So it's loading. Okay, perfect. And then you'll end up on that screen. And mine is already indexed. I only have 90 blocks to sync. So it's just going to take a few seconds or minutes. But because you're doing from scratch, you have hundreds of thousands of blocks to index. And for me, it took um, between 24 hours and 36 hours. I did it over the weekend. So expect this step to take quite a long time. I'm just going to pause the video until the indexing is done. So I just can show you what to expect once the syncing is done. It took two minutes, but now it's all indexed. So the app looks like this. It's very simple. And one thing that I check is that I'm actually connected. And in order to do that, I right click at the bottom right to show this menu and I click there. I can look at the network traffic where I can see I am connected and I downloaded a bunch of stuff. I can look at the console and I'll show you a command that's important to run for you to make sure you are actually indexed. And the command to check that is called get index info. It should autocomplete and you click enter. Here it says sync true, which means I am correctly synced and I am at this uh, block height. If you are just installed it, you are probably way behind and this is going to say false, which means you cannot uh, use ordinals yet or ordinals will not work yet. So you need to wait for you to be indexed. And for you to check the progress and is just type the command again and you should see that number increase until this value says true. Okay. Other thing I want to show you before we move on to the next step is I want to show you my Bitcoin config because it needs to be correctly set. So I'll show you mine and you can compare to make sure it is right. So in order to find your Bitcoin config, you need to go wherever you installed it, either at the root or in your Bitcoin folder. And you should have a Bitcoin.conf file which I'm going to open with text edit. I'm going to zoom in. So you absolutely need the first two lines. I think the last two are optional. You need TX index equal to one and you need server equal to one. If you do not, just add those two and restart the Bitcoin Core app. So it syncs correctly. So now that Bitcoin is indexing, it's going to take a while. But while this is happening, we can start the installation of ordinals and runes. So I'll show you how to do that right now. The first thing we want to do is set where we are going to install it. And we're going to install it under the same either Bitcoin folder that you created or at the root of your hard drive. And I created a folder called ord. So you can do the same. Once you open it, it's going to be empty for the first time. But what you want to do is download the ordinal index. You can actually do that from the command line, but it's actually way faster to download a pre-generated index than index it yourself. So in order to do that, you go to ordstuff.info in your browser. You're going to click on pre-built indexes. I'm currently on version 0 0.18, which is the one I'm, I'm running right now. I'm going to click on it and there are two indexes. You should uh, use the one that's smaller 
27 gigabyte and it's this one so it's a torrent file so you need a torrent app to actually download it even though it's a really large file i think mine took less than an hour so it's fairly fast to to download once you start the download you should actually download it in your old old folder so it's in actually downloading in your uh, external hard drive i don't have it anymore but once it's downloaded it's a zip file or a dzip file so all you have to do is double click it to extract the index from the archive and once that's done it's it takes a couple minutes because it's a really large file it's 73 gigabytes unzipped so it takes some time but once it's done you can just delete the archive one step that is very important is the name of the file is going to be actually this index 0.18 blah 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 you will need to rename that file to just index.redb the naming is important so while the index is downloading we actually need to install the ordinal cli so it's going to get a bit technical right now. What we're going to do is open the terminal in our application. So you can open the spotlight search and type terminal. And I'm actually using another app called iTerm, but they are the same thing. They do the same thing. Once it's open, it should look like this. And the first thing you'll need is homebrew. And to check if you have homebrew installed, you can type brew, enter. And it tells me a bunch of information, which tells me that it is installed. If it's not installed, you can Google homebrew or go to brew.sh. And there's a command here that you can copy by clicking this button. You copy this and you would paste it in your terminal and that will install Homebrew. I believe when the install is complete, you should close the terminal and open it back again. So when you open it, you can type brew to make sure that it is correctly installed. So once it's installed, we're gonna install other dependencies and the dependencies you need are Rust and Ord. So to install them, you're gonna type brew install Rust and Ord on the same line, and you're going to click Enter. OK, I already installed them, so I don't need to re-download and reinstall everything. It takes a couple minutes, but that's the way it's done. I can check that Ordinal has correctly been installed by typing Ord, just ORD, and it's going to print a bunch of information that tells me that ORD is correctly installed and I can check the version by typing ORD dash dash version and I'm on version 0.18.1. Now that we have ORD installed, we want to start the ORD server locally. So I will show you the command right now. It's quite long. So I'll show, look at my history and this is it. You want to type ORD dash dash index runes dash dash cookie file this is the pass to your cookie file at the end of the video i'll show you how to find it if you do not find it uh, there's a few gotchas that you need to know you need dash dash data there there that tells uh ord where the index lives so that's the pass the pass to the ordinal folder that we created then you need the server command and very important you need to add the option dash dash http dash port 3003 it can be another number i just use 3003 if you don't specify a port it will not work and it will not run so i'm going to type enter okay it might take a while to index uh, because the index that you downloaded is not like today's index so it might be uh, behind 
But what you can do is copy this URL and open it in your browser to check that it's actually working. Okay, so we can see the server and we can actually see that it's running. And the URL that you should actually should go to is called status. And you should see runes one, which means we are correctly using the runes index and ordinals is correctly installed. So that completes the installation from scratch for Bitcoin, ordinals and runes. So now you have everything running locally to etch and mint your runes uh, in a couple of days. So there's a few issues that I had during my install that you may have yourself. The first one is the cookie file. I couldn't find my cookie file. So the cookie file gets deleted and recreated every time the Bitcoin Core app is uh, running. So you need to have Bitcoin Core running to have this file. So that's one. And secondly, when I was in my external hard drive, I was looking at my files here and I couldn't find a dot cookie file. And the reason is it's a hidden file by default, which means I do not see it and I need to enable hidden files and you can actually see it right there. So that's how you uh, create and make sure that it correct, correctly exists. So the last issue that I had that I want to address is when I was running my ordinal server, I would be getting this error that you see here. Couldn't receive transaction, failed to fetch raw transaction, blah, 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 blah. And the reason is in order to run ORD, your Bitcoin index needs to be correctly synced and mine was not. So in order to check if yours is synced, we're going to go back to what I showed you at the beginning of the video, which is check the index status. In order to do that, you right click at the bottom here, show peers, you click on console and then you type get index info. And it's going to tell you if your index is synced or not. So mine says true which means it is correctly synced. If you says false, you need to wait for your uh, last block to be the real last block. And you can check the progress by running the command again multiple times. Mine is not ch changing because I am actually synced. Um, when you run the command, if you run it every couple seconds or 10 seconds, you should see it uh, move upward. This concludes our video in setting up ordinals on Mac. I hope this was useful. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment. If you want to see a video on how to etch or mint runes on Signet or Testnet, just let me know in the comments and I'll make a second video on that topic specifically. Bye.